Sometimes, the only way you can really describe a character's legacy is to just call them cursed. Be them a favored unit in a game that is just stuck with some very unfavorable stats, or a staple figure in a revolutionary piece of a franchise's history. This character is either unappreciated by the fan base as a whole, or worse, they are forgotten by their own series' creators. And when time comes around to celebrate that title that they were a part of, they just so happen to not receive the invitation in the mail. And one great example of this is a key figure within the first major battle against the Dark Lord Dracula, the dastardly daring and devil-destroying Dainty Dangler, Grant Dunasty. <laughs> Grant Dynasty is one of the four major player characters in the story of Castlevania III Dracula's Curse, with him originally meeting the protagonist Trevor Belmont after he was transformed into a demon by Dracula, and then made to guard the clock tower of his castle. Though once Trevor has bested him and returned him to his original form, Grant swore himself to Trevor, and together the two would team up alongside the other two members of the gang to help navigate themselves through the dreaded Castlevania. Though, unlike like his companions, Grant's legacy following Castlevania 3's conclusion makes it feel like he was the one truly cursed by Dracula in the end. Though, before we get too deep into that, let's understand the meaning behind his name and design. Now, Grant Dynasty is more than just a fun name to say. It actually has a solid history behind it that ties perfectly into his struggles against the Dark Lord. As Dynasty is a name that has connections back to Count Dracula himself in our real world, with it being a play on the Wallachian House Dynasty, which is a noble household that originates from the Wallachian nobility, more specifically the House of Basarab. Why this is important is the Basarab would go on to spawn off the lineage known as the House of Draculisti, which would be a rival branch that was founded by Vlad Dracul, or Vlad the Dragon, who not only created the Order of the Dragon, but would also famously father the infamous Vlad the Impaler, who would of course go on to be known as Dracula and inspired the famous monster of the same name. And with the history of these two names being rivals, it makes sense that the the name Dynasty would be chosen for a character who would oppose Dracula. Now, design-wise, Grant is a bit misunderstood, mostly due to the American localization of Castlevania III. Gift of transformation and become the vengeful ancient ghost pirate. As you see, he is designed to resemble a classic fantasy thief, with knives being his go-to weapon and his hair tied back in a bandana, which is an extremely common design motif for thieves, bandits, and other roguelike characters before and after Castlevania, with one of the most famous examples of this being Locke from Final Fantasy VI. Though, likely just because of the general bandit design for Grant, the American manual would claim that he was a former captain of a pirate crew, even though he looked nothing like a pirate captain and suited more as a just general pirate. Yet, this label of pirate would be permanently adhered to him and wouldn't be the only example of his poor translation into English, but it is still sadly the one that would have the most disastrous consequences for his relevancy beyond Castlevania III. Because you see, if you look at the original script for Castlevania III, Grant fits closer to an arson Lupin gentleman thief than a Blackbeard pirate, as before the events of Dracula's Curse, Grant lived the life of a noble-natured thief, stealing not only to make it by in the world, but also to develop on his own skills, turning out to be quite the acrobat after a while, and while working in the streets of Wallachia, he grew to care for the town quite a lot, so much so that when the dreaded Dark Lord Dracula began to lay claim to the area and allowed his army of hellish monsters to roam the streets as well, Dynasty would team up together with a group of rebels who hoped to overthrow Dracula on their own and reclaim their town. Though, these rebels only ended up marching themselves into the slaughter, as Dracula would dismember each of them with ease, leaving only Grant alive. Likely spared only due to his perceived skills as a thief, Dracula would use his devil's magic to transform Grant into a terrifying and loyal demon which he would then place within the aforementioned clock tower to greet any unwanted guests. 
And only after a second failed coup of the Dark Lord does the Church reach out to the last surviving Belmont and task them with the mission of defeating the demon. This of course being Trevor, or Ralph if you want to stick entirely to the original script of the game, who would go on to eventually face, defeat, and free Grant of his curse. Which of course leads to one of the first major mistranslations of Grant's character. As in the American version of the game, Grant claims that Dracula had killed his family, when in the original game, it's actually Grant claiming that Dracula had slaughtered everyone, meaning the group of rebels that had invaded his castle. Grant doesn't exactly mention his family in the original text. As well, Grant's words regarding his transformation also implies that he had been conscious of his actions as a demon the entire time, which to me also implies that Dracula might have transformed him when he was initially slaughtering the rebels, meaning that Grant might not only be seeking vengeance against Dracula, but absolution for his crimes. Though no matter his backstory, Grant would soon request that Trevor take him on his mission to go defeat the Dark Lord, and in accepting Grant's request, the player is given access to quite a few unique abilities unseen in the series before this, as due to Grant's life as an acrobat and a thief, he has been given almost spider-like climbing abilities, making it so he can not only climb and cling to walls, but ceilings as well. Along with this, unlike his lumbering companions, Grant has the ability to catch himself on the ledges of platforms and climb back up to the top of them, preventing him from falling to his death. He is a character designed with mobility as its major focus, so much so that in the original development notes for Castlevania 3, he was not only supposed to be able to cling on to enemies, but also lack any offensive option whatsoever. But in the main game release, he was given a small knife, which, just like his story, differs depending on the region of the game that you played. As in the Japanese version, it could be thrown like the dagger sub-weapon, and it didn't even consume hearts, while in the American version, it was a small stab forward with such a limited range that it is quite possibly the worst offensive option in the game. Along with this, he also had access to a variety of Vampire Hunter sub-weapons, such as the axe, dagger, and stopwatch. Now, Grant was clearly created as a character who didn't have a lot of offensive viability. As I've mentioned before, he was definitely created with mobility as his major focus. He was able to reach areas that the other party members couldn't, or usually couldn't without a lot of extra effort. And of course, this helped him capture the general feel of the fantasy or tabletop thief or rogue archetype. Maybe Dracula transformed him because he knew how exceedingly overpowered backstabbing really was. And all together, with the assistance of Saifa Belnades and Alucard, the son of Dracula, the four of them would go on to slay the knight and see the Hell Castle crumble to the ground before them. And Grant, following this adventure, rejuvenated by his time spent hunting the knight in that Hell Castle, would go on to help in the rebuilding effort of Wallachia. As well, he would pass down his legacy as a vampire hunter to his descendants, hoping that they would keep the dynasty name alive. And Grant would leave quite an impression on the Chaos Castle itself, as in both Symphony of the Night and Portrait of Ruin, an imposter zombie dressed as Grant would appear as an enemy that the protagonist must defeat alongside similar zombies taking the form of Trevor and Sypha. As well, he would be one of the characters selected to return in the Castlevania fighting game, Castlevania Judgment. Though his appearance was off, his story was actually slightly similar to that of his Castlevania 3 version. Though, he was given an extra side story which claimed that he was secretly in love with Saifa Belnades, and because of this he refused to be a part of Trevor and her's wedding, which kind of introduces a weird unnecessary element to the character, but these events showed that he had left some sort of legacy on the series itself. As well, speaking of his companions, Sypha, Trevor, and Alucard would all go on to become beloved figures throughout the history of Castlevania, and so it would fit that Grant would receive a similar treatment, right? Well, sometimes life isn't that kind, as Grant, in the dynasty name, would not be used again in the series for many years, with him either being routinely disrespected or unfortunately left out of anniversary events or reimaginings of the Castlevania 3 dynamic. Some examples of this being, of course, with the Julius mode in Castlevania Dawn of Sorrows, where Julius Belmont, Alucard, and Yoko Belnades team up to defeat a warped Dark Lord Soma. Some files in the game suggested that Hammer, of Aria of Sorrow fame, 
was supposed to have returned to fill the role of Grant, but this never came to fruition. As well, a similar thing occurred during the production of Harmony of Despair, where Hammer was seemingly planned for that game as well, would likely have played like Grant, but was snubbed by Getsufuma of Getsufuma Den fame. And a similar thing to this would occur in Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, a Igarashi-led Castlevania successor, which took great inspirations from Castlevania 3 specifically. It had a cast of characters meant to fit the role of Trevor, Saifa, and Alucard. But there was no Grant. Instead, he was replaced with Zengetsu, who, like his name would imply, is inspired heavily by Getsufuma. And even when other game developers try to show respect to Castlevania, and more specifically Castlevania 3, they also exclude Grant such as Dead Cell's official Castlevania DLC, with Alucard, albeit it is his Symphony of the Night design, Trevor Belmont, and Saifa Belnades all making an appearance in the DLC itself. While Grant was sadly forgotten, and then returning to the Konami-made products, in the patchy slot for Castlevania 3, everyone is given a proper glow-up except for Grant, who not only just appeared as a cameo within the game, but also was only his original sprite from Castlevania 3, with no 3D model. He couldn't even find respect in the Lords of Shadows spin-off, with a single dead body of a Brotherhood of Light member appearing within Mirror of Fate that had the dynasty name tied to it, which is only the second most disrespectful thing done to him, with of course the number one being the explanation to his exclusion from the Castlevania Netflix series, with the hack fraud explaining that he cut Grant from the story because of his stupid name and the fact that he was a pirate, which are just both frustrating statements for completely different reasons. Nonetheless, Grant would receive a small cameo during Season 3 of the series, being referred to as an imbecile in a boat-shaped wagon and calling himself the Pirate of the Roads. As well, the dynasty name would appear again throughout Season 4, being the town in which the vampire hunter Greta hailed from. Though, again, this was nothing more than a merely ill-thought-out coincidence on part of the showrunners. Though he wasn't always cut from production of Castlevania 3, as according to details regarding Project 51 Productions' version of Castlevania 3, and more specifically a movie adaptation of Dracula's Curse, Grant was originally meant to play a role alongside his original cast members in a series of movies detailing the game's story. Though of course, this would never come to fruition. And Grant's history of being shafted from left to right throughout the series is honestly a shame, as while he was never a character with the greatest depth to him, the transformation from a well-mannered thief to local town hero could have been a very interesting tool to tell a story through, though luckily there are two specific descendants that we see throughout the history of Castlevania. Firstly, you have the exclusively non-canon Ro Dynasty from the Legend of Satanic Castle, The Vampire Hunters, a Fumitsu choose-your-own-adventure novel, where he teams up with Sid Belmont, Liel, the descendant of Alucard, and Zoke Belnades, the descendant of Saifa, as the four of them go and conquer a reincarnated Dracula in their era. This, of course, is an extremely silly concept, but I felt it was important to mention because it's one of the few things that actually remembered Grant following Castlevania 3. <laughs> and then you have the more semi-canon area of the series with Michelle Dynasty, who appears exclusively in Ryogo Norita's Castlevania novel, Reminiscence of the Divine Abyss, where she is friends and partners with Curtis Lang, a young man who was selected by Julius Belmont to inherit the vampire killer and protect the world from darkness, Michelle was written to be the much more experienced of the two hunters, who utilizes a special crossbow which she loaded with silver bolts to protect Curtis during the earlier half of the novel, though eventually she would have to stand against her friend after he was possessed and used by Orlocks and Death, with hopes of fulfilling Graham Jones, the antagonist from Aria of Sorrows, wishes. Though their love for each other would eventually overpower the dark magic and they topple Orlocks as well as banishing Death, which the events of this novel, I believe, are the last events within the original Castlevania timeline. Meaning that at the end of this long journey throughout Castlevania, with the many vampire hunters who have stepped up to face the night, it was not a Belmont who last banished it, but a Dynasty. Though, of course, this novel is only slightly canon as it was only supervised by Igarashi, I still consider it to be a very interesting read and a very nice thing for his legacy. Though, it was released in 2008, and since then, Grant has been snubbed from many more things. 
Yet, even with that fatal flaw, I think Grant is a very fun character in the series of Castlevania. Because what's better than seeing the bloodline of a once nobody thief conquer the ultimate evil? And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit helps keep this channel flowing as smoothly as possible. And if you want to see your legacy survive into the next era and not be lost like Grant, well, you can ensure your future by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.